Hello students, uh, welcome to this lesson. We are discussing water relations in plants and animals. But for now, let us look at water relations in animals. So we want to look at what would happen if an animal's cell, for example, red blood cell, is placed in solutions of varying concentrations. For instance, if a red blood cell is placed in hypotonic solution, for example, distilled water, what are uh, the observations? Remember, distilled water has a higher concentration of water molecules compared to the red blood, red blood cell cytoplasm. So, when the red blood cell is placed in hypotonic solution, there will be the water will will move into the cell through osmosis that is the first thing then the cell will the cell will swell and finally burst open so this is the cell initially it was this size then place uh, in distilled water or hypotonic solution it gains water by osmosis and eventually it bursts. So the swelling of the red blood cells when placed in hypotonic solution is referred to as hemolysis. So that swelling and bursting of the red blood cell uh, when placed in hypotonic solution or we can say a lowly concentrated solution is called hemolysis and the cell is said to be hemolyzed. So if a red blood cell is placed in hypertonic solution, what will happen? You should know that a hypertonic solution has low concentration of water molecules compared to the red blood cell cytoplasm. So Water will, will therefore be drawn out of the cell into the hypertonic solution. That means the cell will shrink and become small because it has lost water. The cell is said to be crenated. This is it. This is the red blood cell, the initial size and shape. Then you place in a hypertonic solution that is a, a highly concentrated solution. For example, sugar solution, it loses water by osmosis, uh, becomes uh, shrunk, and it is said to be crenated. So the process by which animal cells shrink, or we can say the process by which animal cells lose water, shrink, and become smaller, when placed in hypertonic solution is called crenation. What will happen then if you place a red blood cell in isotonic solution? Do you remember what an isotonic solution is? So we said isotonic solution has the same concentration as that of the cell. So when placed in an isotonic solution, the cell remains unchanged. Reason being, there will be no net inflow or outflow, outflow of water between the cell and the solution because of the concentrations being the same. When the cell becomes hemolyzed or crenated, its functioning is impaired so a cell which has already busted or it has shrunk then its function will be hampered it will not function effectively this means that the body fluids and blood plasma surrounding the cells must be kept at the same concentration as the animal cells for them to function effectively that will prevent busting or shrinking of the cells that would otherwise impair uh, 
or distract their physiology. The body has a way in which these concentrations are maintained at nearly the same concentrations. Now we know how uh, water or, or how animal cells relate. We can now look at water relations in plants. So the water relations in plants is different from that of animal cells. Because a plant cell has both cell wall and cell membrane. And the center of the cell contains a vacuole filled with sap. The sap is a solution of salt and sugars. And it is bound or surrounded by a membrane called the tonoplast. The cell membrane on the outer uh, part and the tonoplast are semi-permeable. While the cellular cell wall is fully permeable, meaning it allows small and large molecules to pass through. So what will happen if a plant cell is placed in hypotonic solution such as distilled water? So the cell will draw water from the hypotonic, hypotonic solution through osmosing, causing it to distain or to enlarge. The cellular cell wall is rigid and also firm and does not allow plant cells to burst as in the case of animal cells. So as the cells gain more water, the vacuole enlarges and exerts an outward uh, pressure on the cell wall. That outward pressure being exerted on the cell wall as the cell gains more water is called targa pressure. And this targa pressure increases as more water is being taken into the vacuole, causing the cell to stretch and stretch until it can no longer stretch. At that time, the cell is firm and turgid or very strong. So, Tiger pressure is referred to as that outward pressure that the, the cell cytoplasm exerts on the cell wall as it gains water through the process of osmosis. So when the cell wall is being stretched towards the outside, it will develop a, a resistant pressure to stretching that is equivalent but opposite to tiger pressure. And that is called the wall uh, pressure. So the pressure that is developed uh, by the cell wall as it is being stretched toward the outside and uh, is equal and opposite to tiger pressure is referred to as wall pressure. Then, how about if we place a plant cell in hypertonic solution? For example, salt or sugar solution. When placed in hypertonic solution, the plant cell will lose water to the solution through osmosis, just like in an animal cell. As the water moves out of the cell, the cell starts to shrink, becomes less rigid or flabby, and, that, that, and, and such a cell is said to be flaccid. If the cell loses more water, its contents reduce in size and the plasma membrane pulls away from the cell wall towards their center. So the process through which plant cells lose water, shrink and become flaccid or less rigid is called plasmolysis. This process of plasmolysis can be reversed when the flaccid cell or the plasmolyzed cell is placed in distilled water. That reversal is called displasmolysis. That means um, the, the flaccid cell will gain water uh, through osmosis and just becomes aged. Uh -huh. This is it. So if you place the cell in dilute solution, 
it just stretches, stretches, stretches toward the cell wall, uh, but will not burst. If you place in uh, a hypertonic solution, the cell will just uh, shrink. and become flaccid. You can see the cytoplasm is pulled away from the cell wall. Then we have wilting as the next thing we want to look at. So plants always lose water to the atmosphere through the process of transpiration and evaporation simultaneously as water is being drawn from the soil so these processes occur at the same time the process of water uh, loss and the process of absorption from the soil they occur at the same time so wilting is that phenomenon that occurs when plant cell loses more water than they can draw from the soil that makes the plants to lose their target pressure and droop at night plants uh, may recover, recover from wilting since the stomata are closed and water loss through evaporation has been reduced has been reduced so where water supply from the soil is inadequate or is not enough plants may fail to recover from wilting and they undergo permanent wilting yeah, that is it so wilting, so that means water, uh, plants require enough water for them to be uh, effective and to survive well. So in a situation there where there is excess water loss compared to that which is being absorbed, the plants are going to wilt. And how is osmosis important to living organisms? First, it helps in absorption of water from the soil. The root hair cells of plants absorb water from the soil through the process of osmosis. That means osmosis helps in distribution and movement of water from the roots to other parts of the plant because the uh, cells, the nearby cells will draw water from the cells which are having high concentration of water so until uh, uh, water reaches all the tissues of the plant another role of osmosis is osmoregulation in animals that is regulation of osmotic pressure in our body fluids then osmosis plays an important role is in uh, support in herbaceous plants and young seedlings so these plants depend on water for fragility. So when the cells of these plants take in water through osmosis, the cells become firm or rigid and thus they acquire their support. For example, uh, plants like uh, kelps or uh, blackjack, those plants that have weak or non woody stems, they depend on water for support. Uh, woody stems are like uh, the big trees like uh, cedar, eucalyptus so they have tissues that offer support to them but these other plants that have weak stems they largely depend on water for support osmosis also plays a role in opening and closing of stomata of plants since the guard cells surrounding the stomata uh, contain chloroplast that means they will synthesize glucose through their photosynthesis in presence of light energy from the sun so as the glucose accumulate in the guard cells, you expect the osmotic pressure to increase. That makes them to obtain water from their neighboring cells through their process of osmosis. So if these guard cells uh, acquire water from the neighboring cells through osmosis, they become turgid. And as a result, they bulge or swell outside, outwards leading to opening of the stomata. 
So if the stomata open, it allows for gaseous exchange in plants, especially carbon four oxide to be used in the process of photosynthesis as oxygen exits the plant into the uh, atmosphere. Uh, at night, we have no glucose synthesis because there is no a light energy. What happens is that glucose available in the guard cells is broken down through the process of respiration. That means glucose is reduced and therefore osmotic pressure is reduced, resulting in guard cells losing their turgidity. And if they lose their turgidity, they close the stomata. I believe that is very clear. Another role of osmosis is feeding in insectivorous plants. These plants digest, uh, trap and digest insects because they live in nitrogen deficient soil. So that means um, the soil in which they grow have little of nitrogen. So they have a way, they must have get a way of obtaining nitrogen. That is by trapping insects. These plants possess special structures that suddenly change their target pressure when disturbed or when an, in an insect uh, lands on the leaves of these um, uh, insect, uh, on the leaves of these plants. So these plants possess some swellings called bulvini uh, that change their target pressure when touched. The change in target pressure enables the special structures to rapidly close, therefore trapping the insects. And if the insects have been trapped, they are digested and they are able to obtain the nitrogen uh, or the, 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 the nutrient which they were lacking. Another role of osmosis is osmoregulation in animals. In the kidney tubes of animals, Water is withdrawn from the tubes in the body cells uh, through osmosis across the tubular walls. This enables animals to maintain osmotic uh, pressure of the body fluids. Now we know the roles of osmosis. You can be asked to discuss the role of osmosis in plants only. So you pick for those uh, regarding plants and you must know those roles regarding os, uh, animals. For example, osmoregulation uh, is regarding um, animals. The others like uh, uh, absorption of water and mineral salts, support in herbaceous and young seedlings, uh, closing and opening of stomata as well as feeding in, is in insectivorous plants are the roles of osmosis in plants only. Then we want to look at the factors that affect the rate of osmosis and they include concentration of solution and concentration gradient. So osmosis is greater when the separated solutions have a greater difference in osmotic pressure. In summary, the greater the concentration gradient, the greater the rate of osmosis. And if um, the, co the, the concentration gradient is low or small then the rate of osmosis is uh, also slow we have a temperature if there is an increase in temperature then there would be an increase in the rate of osmosis because it increases the energy content of the molecules we also have the thickness of the membrane the thicker the membrane or the heavier the tissues the lower the rate of osmosis uh, because there will be a larger distance to be covered by the uh, particles. So when the, 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 the rate of osmosis is also greater through a thinner membrane. So if the membrane is thick, that means our osmosis will take a lot of time. But uh, for thinner tissues, Osmosis is faster because the, t the, the substances that are, being, uh, that are moving have a shorter distance to cover. 
that has been our lesson. I believe it has been very interesting discussion. Uh, we have a lot of assignment uh, for you. Just go through and then uh, I believe you will understand well. This is the assignment for you up to that end. So a lot of work for you students. And uh, discuss with your peers. You can even contact us at Colanet in case of any difficulty. Uh, but if you have understood the lesson, then you will just have to think critically for you uh, to be able to answer the questions well. Goodbye.